Thank you very much. Emerald Lagasse, welcome to Emerald Live. You know, kind of hate cooking when your recipe calls for like five, six, seven pots, don't you? Yes. It's all about keeping it simple, especially when you're washing the dishes. That's why tonight is going to be all about one pot cooking tonight. That's what we're going to do. Giving it up. How about Doc Gibbs in the Emerald Lab, baby? Yeah. One pot, one dish, and one happy dishwasher. <laughs> one pot dishes tonight, right here, folks, on Emerald Live. <laughs> Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. We are going to cook in one pot tonight. All a couple of different types of pots, just to show you. This first dish, before I get into uh, the menu tonight, this is actually not very popular here in the United States yet. This is a one pot, in Europe, better known as a pressure cooker. We get afraid of those things as soon as you say pressure cooker here. They're really easy, three positions, Open, let the vent out, and then close. And we're going to do our first dish in this in a second. But first, let's talk about what's on the menu tonight as far as the old one-pot dishes. With that one pot, we are going to begin, and I'm going to show you some oxtails done Caribbean style. Great flavor, great dish, love oxtails. And then we're going to do a little chicken and rice. Arroz con polio. Con polio. Uh, and then uh, we're going to take a big skillet and show you how to make cheesy grits with eggs and bacon all in one shot. One of my favorites, apple glazed pork loin that we're going to do. All in, all in one pot. And then I, uh, I thought we would make a little Asian seafood chowder as well and just sort of kick that up. But y'all with me out there tonight? Yeah. All, right. All right. So, um, what we're going to do, real simple, I actually cooked some pork ribs over the weekend in about 22, 24 minutes in this thing, start to finish. I mean, they were like coming off the bones. Just unbelievable. Put it all in there, bam! <laughs> Put the lid on, bam! <laughs> Turn the stove on, bam! <laughs> 22 minutes later. Yeah, bam! <laughs> I guess you had to been there. <laughs> Oxtails, love them. You know what, this really works good too when you, uh, when you have a bit of fat on whatever you're cooking in these things here, like oxtails, ribs. We're gonna season them real simple, salt and pepper. <laughs> and then we're going to stop browning them. Love oxtails. I like doing this also with short ribs. It's another thing that you could get. Short ribs. All right, so look, we're going to stop browning these up first. I think they all may fit. Huh. By golly. Now I've got to season the other side. Hate one-sided taste in food. 
little salt and pepper, and we're going to brown these up. When we brown them, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to get the other ingredients to uh, sort of Caribbean, Caribbean style them, if you will. And I'll show you exactly what that is when we come back. Stick around. Doc Gibbs! <laughs> Welcome back, welcome back. One pot dishes tonight. Speaking about the one pot. Boy, you see how fast this thing is? It's like magic. So, you could take the oxtails out of there. Bob, bob, bob. Or you can just say, we're getting happy. We're gonna add onions. Some celery and carrots, better known as a maripois. Then we're going to add a little bit of green onion, some ginger, a little bit of garlic in there, huh? A little bit of leeks. Then we're going to take and add about a good almost tablespoon or so of tomato paste, which is going to be the, the foundation. It's going to hold it together. Oh, hold me together, baby. <laughs> Please, somebody do that. Now, this is going to be the thickener, the flour, for this gravy we're going to make right in the old pot. Huh? Get it? One pot? <laughs> so rough crowd tonight, Mom. <laughs> so we get the flour. This is a little bit of allspice. Oh, yeah. So now we'll put a little beer in there. Oh, yeah. Little beer. We'll put just a little bit of beef broth. Shh. They'll all be doing it. <laughs> Check out our liquid. Oh, yeah, this is looking already real good. Now, the only thing about this, folks, you want to keep... This little gadget here, you want to keep this away from you. Let the steam shoot out, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to lock it in. Whoop! It is locked in, baby. Okay, so we've got it locked. Now we're going to let it just do its thing. All right? It's doing it. <laughs> can't see it, but can't smell it either. It's doing it. Meanwhile, chicken and rice. Hmm. I've got some thigh pieces, and um, I like to just sort of flat mine out a little bit. Okay, don't forget the chicken rule. That's why we have a Separate board. Got our own chicken boards now. Oh, yeah. Chicken police probably right outside over there. <laughs> so you can either use a mallet or, you know, something close to it. We just pound these out a little bit. Thank you. Some nice pounding music by Doc Gibbs. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to take some olive oil. Oh, you hear that thing going already? Oh, yeah, babe. Can you hear that? Yeah. Wow. Turning the heat down a little. Now, we're going to season the chicken. See, I'm going to add some seasoning in my hand. That way, I don't have to go through the car wash. <laughs> season both sides. Okay. Now, we're going to start browning the chicken. Now, we'll do about three at a time. We'll brown them up. Remember, touch the chicken. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're brutal. Oh, yeah. Now, while the chicken is browning, I got a little onion, a little celery. I got some paprika and garlic. When we come back, I'll show you this delicious chicken and rice dish. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Doc is. out here, yeah. folks. Before we uh, serve up, you hear that baby going? It's like a jet. <laughs> Gonna slowly start turning the heat down a little bit. Keep it away from you. Let that steam just kind of go there. Meanwhile, I've been browning our chicken for a little arroz con polio. Once the chicken's brown, watch this. We're going to add onion, a little celery. I'm going to cook this now. Now, Back to the one pot. This has been going about 20 minutes. I'm going to just turn the burner off and let's start releasing some of the steam before I unlock it a little bit. While that's doing that, now what we're going to do is we're going to add the garlic, paprika, Get that flavor going in there. We're going to add a little salt, pepper. Can you smell that? Oh, yeah. We're going to add a couple of bay leaves. Then once that cooks, we're going to add some tomato, some green olives. Oh, yeah, I love them. This is some uh, hot chili. Oh, yeah, babe. Oh, got to live a little. Little sweet pepper, also known as pimento. Now, we're going to add a little white wine. Just a little bit. We're going to add a little bit of chicken broth. 
Now, I'm going to bring this up a little bit, let it evaporate. Now I'm going to bring this to the release level. That would be the second position. Let it release all the pressure. Let it release all the steam. You're not going to believe this. It's unbelievable. About 25 minutes now. <laughs> then I'm going to add the chicken back in here. The rice. And then this next thing is very optional, but it does really make the dish. It's like the world's most expensive spice, saffron. Just before we came back, I asked the culinary guru back there, Alyssa, if she could uh, help me out make a quick call, get the uh, today's market price on saffron. Spanish saffron an ounce today, $140. Oh. I better go easy with it, huh? <laughs> so we're going to add a little bit of saffron in here for the flavor and the color. Look at those threads, huh? Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. This will go a long way, though. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to cover this, and then what we're going to do now is show you how we're going to open and look at the oxtails. Where do you see this? I'm going right in. I feel... I'm feeling good about it. So I'm, look, I'm going right in for the oxtail. I'm going right in for the oxtail, and I'm going in for the oxtail and some goodies. Now comes the true test, is what we're going to do is we'll add a little bit of essence, we'll add a little bit of fresh parsley, and a little bit of fresh chives. And my friends, 25, maybe 30 minutes, I've got braised oxtails. Just unbelievable. All right, we got our chicken and rice on the stove. When we come back, wait till you see what's coming. Stick around. We'll be right back. There's Emma Lagasse here cooking up uh, a meal in a one pot tonight. Just did oxtail sort of braised stew. Yummy. Just 25 minutes, right, in that one pot? Unbelievable. I uh, have chicken and rice. Rus con pulio. Yeah, well, what, let, let's have a look at that before I go show you this other thing. Check this out. All right. When you, uh, about 25 minutes later, it's going to look like this. And then, I wish you could smell this. Still got a little liquid in it. It's got a little spice to it. 
What makes it that spice is the paprika. You know, you can have hot paprika, you can have sweet paprika, right? Yes. To garnish it, some corn and some peas. And we'll let these just sort of fold it over without breaking it all up. And then we're going to come back here in a second. Oh, yeah, babe. And dish this up. All right, we'll let this get hot. We'll come back and dish it up. Now, in this pot here, little sautois pot, I started browning some bacon. And I did some during the break. Do some more. Everything all right up there, folks? <laughs> oh, yeah, babe. This show has something to do about, you know. It's the hunger show. I just had dinner an hour ago. I'm still hungry. Okay, so now we got the bacon going on. What we're going to do in this pot here, you're going to love it. We're going to just do a breakfast dish all in the same pot. So what we're going to do is once the bacon's done, we'll see how much of the bacon juice is there. I hate using the word fat. It's not an attractive thing. You know. And grease isn't very attractive. But it is tasty. My kind of girl. So, and I like it. It's good for you. It makes you like your skin. Like, right. Right. Exactly. Oh, forget it. I'm not going there. All right. So once the bacon gets brown, we're going to make grits in the pan. Once we get the grits made, then we're going to put the eggs in the pan with the bacon. And then we have the cheesy grit, eggs, and bacon all in one pot. <laughs> But first, we don't want to overcook the chicken and rice. So I just, you know, it's like jambalaya, just delicious. So I like to just kind of spoon it like such. Doesn't that look great? One more piece of chicken for me. Oh, yeah, babe. Right on top, like such. And again, what we'll do is we'll just sort of simply garnish it. And uh, you guys all right with that? Yeah. A little bit of fresh chives. And there you have it, a little chicken and rice run the pot right there. Yeah. Back to the breakfast. All right, the bacon, just about done. We'll take it out. Ah, that's a little bit too much juice. juice. <laughs> Not that I always have a little bit too much pork juice. <laughs> Let's take a little out. So you can just do this. Then quickly go polish the car. <laughs> All right. Poor juice. All right, now here's what we're going to do. We're going to come in here with some milk. Go in there with the grits. And then what you're going to do, equal pots of water is you're going to start bringing these babies up, stirring them with a whisk first. You know, people say, oh, those grits, they don't taste very good. They taste gritty. <laughs> really? You're on to something. <laughs> Try cooking next. But then basically, 
In a little bit of time, they look like this. You see? Oh, yeah, don't burn them, baby. Don't burn them. You got to keep stirring them. All right. I'm turning the heat way down. Low. I'm going in with some eggs. Check it out. One. All right. Oh, we've got an educated bunch here tonight. <laughs> oh, you're playing with my emotions. Does that look good? Cinco. Then, you just kind of put the bacon back. Why not? Hey, a lot of Sundays you don't know what to do with yourself. <laughs> Try this dish. When we come back, another notch! So fine. All right, before I unveil my wonderful cheesy grits, eggs, bacon, I added a little cheese on top, too. Oh, yeah, babe. Feeling a little cheesy. I got a little pork loin here that I'm going to salt and pepper and show you how to do this dish in a crock pot. They're coming back. Yeah. Hey, what's not to like about them? Throw everything in the pot. See you in about six hours. I'm not going there. Bad, bad, bad. I'm having trouble with this pork loin right now, Doc. All right, so what we're going to do in this pot here is we're going to sear. Fat side down. This pork. Let's kind of get all the juices in there first, right? Keep them in. Then I have, I have some parsnips and some turnips. Nice combination. Okay? All right, look, before we blow it up, let's unveil... Oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> Could you imagine going to the table with this dish? Doesn't that look great? So I'm just going to see if I can... Oh, yeah, babe. That... That's gonna work for me just fine. There you have it, folks. Getting back to the pork loin, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a little syrup. You'll see. Apple sauce, apple vinegar, brown sugar, some ginger, a little thyme, and some sage. Then we're going to put that on the old burner real quick. And then we're going to turn this thing over. Oh, yeah, baby. You can kind of see, see you, you can get a shot of this right here. See how it's kind of got that built-in thermometer already, folks? It's the same thing like with tuna. You can kind of see it, salmon. You can kind of see it's cooking. (laughs) 
Well, I'm not jumping in. <laughs> so we want to dissolve this mixture up for this applesauce sort of syrup, if you will. And then what we're going to do, we're just using the heat to dissolve it a little bit. What we're going to do is this. We're going to take the crock pot now. Turnips. Parsnips. Bay leaf, a little salt. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> so now my parsnips and turnips are sitting and seasoned real nice. Going to take the pork roast. Then we're going to take the syrup with the applesauce right over that, baby. Oh, yeah, babe. Bye-bye. <laughs> now, you ever see what this is here? This is my new favorite gadget here. It's not new. It's been around for hundreds of years. Used it a lot in Moroccan cooking, Middle Eastern cooking. It's called the tagine. Don't touch that dial. <laughs> it's tagine man. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to start by making a little chowder in here. Okay? Chowder. So in the tagine, here's what we're going to do. We're going to start the broth. So I've got a little... light chicken broth, and I have a little bit of fish broth. Oh, yeah, babe. Uh, it's not like no one's hungry here, <laughs> including me. Then to that, I thought we would just kind of Asian it up a little bit. So I've got these Chinese mushrooms, water chestnuts, some carrot, and some bok choy. Yeah. Then here, a little coconut milk. Oh, yeah. A little American milk. Now, we're going to mix this in here. We're going to bring it up to a boil. And then what happens with the tagine is it traps. See, it's sort of locked in there. It traps all the flavors in there. Great way, great healthy cooking. It's like a steamer in a pot all in one. Because once this comes up to a boil, I'm going to let it simmer 15 minutes. I got some beautiful pieces of grouper that I got at the fish market. We're going to add that in there, and I'll show you what it looks like when we come back. Doc Gibbs! Darcy here, a little one-pot cooking tonight. We're cooking right now in a crock pot. So, uh, my guy Vince back there tells me uh, four to six hours in that crock pot, man. It's perfect. Oh, yeah. We ain't going anywhere. So, I'm about ready to show you that in a minute. I've already reversed the heat a little bit. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. What's happening here? Whoa, 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 whoa. Getting a little wild. <laughs> Show you in a second here. <laughs> Clean up. <laughs> so, 
before I put the lid back on. So he was trapping all of that moisture in there. It's what it, it's fantastic. I made a jambalaya in this thing last week. Oh, yeah, babe. Nice and moist, delicious. Great. Chicken stew. Something's happening here. You hear that? Yeah. It's like... Yeah. Wonder why it blew over. Come on. Huh. Portuguese ingenuity. Now, what I want to do now, two things. I want to taste the broth and see where the seasoning is at and see if we have to re-season. Yes. <laughs> see, if you wait to the end, it's too late. This is when you should be re-seasoning now. Second thing. I'm going to... Uh, Get the fish, whatever fish you have. Look at how beautiful this is, huh? Fish should not smell like fish. If it does, go for the lamb. <laughs> so a little seasoning. Now we're going to add the fish in here. If we wanted to add potatoes, we could add potatoes. We got the heat down, okay? Now we're gonna turn it down, put the tagine right back on. Oh, getting excited, eh? <laughs> Whoa. Hmm. So, hmm. Too much, huh? Okay? Try it again. Hey. All right. I'll tell you one thing. This thing is so, so, so moist. And uh, basically, what I'm going to show you folks here, real quick. We're just going to take a slice of this. Look at how moist this is. I'm going to take the string off. So moist. I'd like to just take a couple of slices like this. Okay? Look at how moist that is. And then we've got this applesauce with the parsnips and the turnips. And we're just going to kind of... Look at that, huh? So moist, so delicious. I'm getting into this crock pot thing again. Really, this long cooking thing, you know, you just, it's really great. That one pot, got the tagine, just waiting for the fish. Now, when the fish is ready for this particular, what I'm going to do is show you. I've got a little bit of nori, seaweed, you know, they wrap sushi with. I'm going to put a few pieces of this in there, some black sesame seeds. And for me, I'm going to kick it up a little bit, so I'm going to add a little crushed red pepper in there, all right? And then basically, when the fish is cooked very close, you don't want to overcook it, then it's just going to get all funky. So now what we'll do is we go in here. And we get that wonderful sort of Asian chowder, if you will. Let the tagine finish its job. And then how I like to finish garnishing this is a little bit of cilantro, a 
few leaves like this just picked. And um, a little bit of crispy wontons. Just kind of put a few of those in there. And then if you really want to kick it up another notch, you could just do a little salmon roe caviar like this. And there you have it. One pot meals. I'm Emeril Lagasse. I want to thank you for joining me tonight. I'll see you next time.